Tonight, in the raging mid-Atlantic, a deadly ballet unfolds. A $100 million F-35C Lightning II is fighting to land on a runway just 300 feet long. But this runway isn't still. It's pitching violently, like a three-story building on a roller coaster, and screaming forward at over 30 miles per hour. For the pilot, this isn't a landing. It's a controlled crash. One heartbeat of error and catastrophe strikes. Welcome to the USS Gerald R. Ford CVN-78. This is the most expensive war machine ever built. A $13 billion floating fortress, a mobile symbol of American might. It displaces 100,000 tons, as much as 800 fully loaded Boeing 747s. It's so massive, you could lay the Eiffel Tower flat on deck and still have room to spare. It's hailed as the pinnacle of naval engineering, a technological marvel built to dominate the seas for the next 50 years. But tonight, we're not talking about nuclear reactors or electromagnetic catapults, because a brutal paradox lies within this superpower. The true cost of running this beast isn't measured in dollars. It's paid in blood, sweat, mental exhaustion, and the silent sacrifice of nearly 5,000 brave souls who call this place home. While the media shows you its power, we're showing you the human fragility inside. We're pulling back the curtain on the raw truth of life aboard, suffocating confinement, soul-crushing pressure, and cruel isolation thousands of miles from loved ones. And stay locked in, because we're taking you to a zone on this ship so dangerous it operates on the edge of unimaginable disaster, where one tiny mistake could doom the entire vessel. The truth of what they face daily will shock you. This is the story of unsung heroes enduring the unimaginable so we can sleep in peace. Before we dive into their world, I need you to do one thing. If you feel gratitude for the men and women defending our freedom right now, type grateful in the comments. It's the least we can do to honor their service. Now brace yourself. You're about to discover the power of a superpower. With nearly 5,000 residents, the USS Gerald R. Ford has a bigger population than many small American towns. It's a floating city in every sense. But here's the brutal difference. In your town, you stroll through parks, drive wide streets, or relax in your backyard. On the Ford, you live inside a giant nuclear-powered war factory. And in this war machine, humans come second. Over 90% of the ship's interior is dedicated to machinery, weapons, jet fuel, and electronics. 5,000 people are crammed into the remaining 10%. The paradox is staggering. You're on one of the largest ships on Earth, yet you feel imprisoned. Forget wide cruise ship hallways. This is a claustrophobic steel maze. Passageways are often under three feet wide. Sailors move like choreographed dancers just to pass without gridlock. And personal elevators? Unless you're a 2,000-pound bomb, you climb dozens of decks every day. But the real cruelty hits at bedtime. Welcome to the birthing compartments, where our heroes rest. A typical berth packs 60 to 90 sailors into a space barely larger than your average living room. This is your bed, or as they call it, your rack. And trust me, it tests human limits. A standard rack is 72 inches long, 26 inches wide with just 20 inches of headroom. Picture this, it's narrower than a standard coffin. Like trying to sleep inside a horizontal refrigerator. No room to sit up fully. Sailors grimly nickname them coffin lockers, a brutal truth of their living space. Think of your last cramped flight. Now imagine living in that seat for nine straight months. That's their daily reality. Population density here rivals Manhattan's most crowded blocks. Your personal belongings? Everything you own during deployment. Clothes, toiletries, books, family mementos, 
must fit into a space smaller than a standard airline carry-on. That's it. In this world of zero privacy, a thin navy blue curtain becomes a sailor's most prized possession. It's their only wall, their sole barrier between them and the ship's chaos. Behind it, they read letters from home, stare at photos of loved ones they won't see for months, and cling to fleeting moments of peace. What's astonishing is how they adapt. It demands extraordinary discipline and mutual respect to coexist in such confinement. They learn to move in silence, honoring each other's space even when real space doesn't exist. It's a masterclass in human resilience few of us could comprehend. But finding a place to sleep is only half the battle. Because even when you crawl into your narrow rack, silence is impossible. This ship is a massive industrial beast that never shuts up. And the relentless assault on your senses is just beginning. In the steel labyrinth of the USS Ford, silence is a luxury that doesn't exist. This ship isn't just home to 5,000 people. It's a heavy industrial complex, a military airport, and a nuclear power plant, all fused into one, running at full throttle 24-7 and it unleashes a symphony of deafening chaos. Even deep in the hull, the roar of massive ventilation systems and the groan of machinery never cease. It seeps into your bones. But that's just the baseline. The real torment begins when flight operations kick in. ton jet slams onto the deck overhead, it's not like a normal plane. It's a controlled car crash every 60 seconds. The Advanced Arresting Gear, AAG, absorbs that colossal energy, producing a piercing metallic screech felt throughout the ship. Then comes MALS, the Electromagnetic Aircraft Launch System. When it hurls a fighter jet, a massive electromagnetic pulse creates a ship-shaking thump followed by the ear-splitting roar of afterburners at max thrust. On the flight deck, noise levels routinely exceed 140 decibels. To put that in perspective, that's louder than standing next to the speakers at the wildest rock concert. It's enough to cause permanent hearing damage in seconds, without double ear protection, plugs, and muffs. This constant sensory assault takes a toll. Nerve fatigue is a constant enemy. Chronic stress builds, communication becomes a challenge, and sleep? Sleep becomes a survival skill honed in the harshest environment imaginable. But noise isn't the only sensory deprivation. For hundreds of sailors working deep in the beast engineers, reactor techs, logistics crews, they face another trial, eternal darkness. When you work 12 decks below the waterline, the concept of day and night vanishes. Your life is governed by fluorescent lights and work schedules. Many of these invisible heroes go weeks or even months without seeing natural sunlight. They breathe recycled air and toil in a windowless world. While we complain about cloudy days, these sailors live in total isolation from the planet's natural rhythm. The disorientation is real. It disrupts your body's internal clock, adding to the already crushing mental load of deployment. In this high-stress, sleep-deprived, sensory-isolated world, meeting basic human needs – eating, drinking, staying clean – becomes a massive military operation. And the sheer scale of it will blow your mind. Armies march on their stomachs. And on the Ford, that's an army of 5,000 that must be fed around the clock. The logistics here aren't just impressive, they're near miraculous. We're talking 18,000 meals served daily. To pull this off, over 100 culinary specialists work tirelessly in galleys running nearly 24-7. These aren't ordinary cooks, they're morale warriors. Their day starts at 3 a.m., prepping breakfast in spaces tighter than most food trucks, while the ship pitches in heavy seas. 
They're true artists, turning stored ingredients into nourishing meals that sustain both body and spirit. And trust me, a good meal can mean the difference between a bad day and a bearable one. But food is just part of it. Keeping 5,000 people clean and healthy is another battle. With limited showers and sinks, personal hygiene is a strictly scheduled event. Sailors often queue for showers, and the Navy shower, wet, lather, rinse with water off, is standard. And let's not forget medical care. Shipboard doctors and corpsmen handle everything from minor cuts to life-threatening emergencies, all while the ship rocks in storms. They're silent heroes, keeping the crew combat ready. But amid all these logistical battles, a greater threat lurks a place where the line between success and disaster is razor thin. That's where true heroes are forged, and where courage is tested daily. Welcome to the Flight Deck, the most dangerous workplace on Earth. The Ford's Flight Deck isn't a normal runway. It's an environment where speed, power, and the ocean's unpredictability create a dance with death. Imagine, you're on a slippery steel surface as 30-ton jets scream in at 150 miles per hour, missing you by feet. Arresting wires, thick steel cables stop them in two seconds, generating force like crashing into a brick wall at 60 miles per hour. The flight deck sailors' color-coded jerseys are circus performers in a war zone. They work in conditions where one slip means disaster. A loose fuel hose can spark an inferno. A wrong hand signal can cause a crash. And then there's the weather. The ocean doesn't care about your schedule. In storms, the deck becomes a giant ice rink, with 100-foot waves slamming the ship. Sailors work in driving rain, howling winds, and stinging salt spray. But the deadliest time is night. Night carrier landings are described as one of aviation's most dangerous tasks. Pilots rely on skill and blind trust in instruments, while deck crews operate in near-total darkness. The shocking truth? Despite cutting-edge tech, Flight deck accident rates are higher than many combat operations. These sailors risk their lives not in battle, but in daily routine. They are true heroes. Their courage is legendary, and their resilience keeps the ship alive. But even the bravest have limits. And on the Ford, the psychological toll of deployment can break the strongest souls. Carrier deployment isn't a mission. It's a nine-plus-month endurance test of the mind. Imagine. Thousands of miles from family, no days off, 18-hour shifts, seven days a week, and constant reminders of danger all around. Isolation is the greatest enemy. In a hyper-connected age, sailors face limited or no internet. Video calls home are a rare privilege, often cut short by schedules and security. Stress builds, fatigue becomes a constant companion, and in this environment, mental health becomes a silent battlefield. The Navy knows this. Embedded psychologists work tirelessly to provide support. And we must never forget the heroes at home Navy families. The spouses, the kids enduring long absences, living with constant worry and holding the home front together while their loved ones face danger. Their sacrifice is just as great. Our military's strength comes from the strength of its families. Drop a blue heart in the comments now to show love and support for these incredible Navy families. Amid mental strain and isolation, the crew can never let their guard down. Because on a warship, disaster is one moment away. And when the worst happens, there's no 911. General Quarters! General Quarters! All hands man your battle stations! That's the sound that sends chills down every sailor's spine. In the middle of the ocean, you are your own first responder. No fire department, no escape. And on a ship carrying millions of gallons of jet fuel, thousands of tons of explosives and two nuclear reactors, the greatest threat comes from within. Fire is every sailor's ultimate nightmare. In a sealed steel box, a small flame can become an uncontrollable inferno, consuming oxygen and spewing toxic smoke. That's why damage control, DC training, isn't just important, it's an obsession. And here's a mind-blowing fact. 
Every sailor on the Ford, from the newest cook to the most seasoned pilot, is a professional firefighter. They train relentlessly. They practice fighting fires in total darkness, in smoke-filled compartments where temperatures soar past 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit. They learn to patch hull breaches and pump flooding faster than it pours in. It takes a special kind of courage to run toward danger when every instinct screams run away. To charge into a burning or flooding space, trusting your shipmates have your back. Drills happen daily. The crew is pushed to their limits, ensuring reactions are second nature. Because when disaster strikes, like the devastating fire on USS Bonhomme Richard or the collision of USS Fitzgerald, this training and raw courage determine whether the ship lives or dies. The Ford's combat readiness isn't in its weapons. It's in its ability to take a hit, control damage, and keep fighting. And that resilience is forged in the bravery and skill of every sailor aboard. We've seen the extreme hardship, the suffocating confinement, the relentless danger, the painful isolation. The natural question is, why? Why do we ask nearly 5,000 young Americans to endure conditions most of us can't even imagine? The answer lies in the harsh reality of our world. 90% of global trade travels by sea. Our prosperity, our economy, our freedom, all depend on open, secure sea lanes. And in a world full of adversaries and instability, peace must be enforced. The USS Gerald R. Ford isn't just a ship. It's 100,000 tons of mobile diplomacy. It's the most powerful symbol of America's commitment to allies and the sternest warning to anyone who threatens our interests. When crisis erupts, the first question every president asks is, where's the nearest carrier? Its presence can prevent a war before it starts. It can deliver massive humanitarian aid. And if needed, it can unleash overwhelming combat power anywhere, anytime. Every sacrifice we've witnessed, every sleepless night in a coffin rack, every rushed meal, every heart-pounding moment on the flight deck, translates directly into our safety and security at home. They endure confinement so we can breathe free. This is the paradox of a superpower. We built a $13 billion machine, a technological marvel that can reshape the world. But after looking inside, we realize technology isn't what makes it great. The true power of the USS Gerald R. Ford isn't in its nuclear reactors or electromagnetic catapults, it's in the hearts, grit, and unbreakable spirit of the 5,000 volunteers who run it. It's in the grease-covered engineers keeping the engines alive. It's in the young cooks making sure everyone eats. It's in the deck warriors risking their lives every hour. They embody the Navy's highest values, honor, courage, commitment. They are the shining example of putting duty above self. Tonight, as you drift off in your soft, quiet bed, in the safety of your home. Remember the young hero in a cramped steel box in the middle of the ocean, standing watch for you. If this video gave you a deeper understanding of the true cost of freedom, and if it filled you with renewed pride in those who defend us, I ask you to hit like and subscribe. Not for the channel, but to send a message of support to them. Share this story so more people know about their extraordinary sacrifice. And finally, to every veteran and active duty service member watching. We want to hear from you. Share your story, your experience, your memories in the comments below. This community honors you. On behalf of all of us here, we salute your service. God bless the United States Navy and God bless the United Carrier, States the of USS America. Gerald R. 